the ocean. Vast, inscrutable, ever-changing, yet ever the same. From the dawn of human history, the ocean's many moods and mysteries have awed and challenged mankind, especially those who have gone down to the sea in ships. The ocean has always been reluctant to yield its secrets to the probing mind of man, and today it reveals few clues about the threat that lurks in its depths. Yet though seldom seen, the sinister presence is always there, somewhere. In waters stormy or still, it is there, possessing a destructive potential almost beyond human comprehension. This ever-present threat is the Soviet submarine fleet, an underwater armada of more than 300 vessels. The existence of this growing fleet and its veiled purposes have made anti-submarine warfare, ASW, a prime mission of the United States Navy. The objectives of this mission are to detect classify, localize, and in time of war, destroy enemy submarines. Carrying out this mission is an awesome responsibility, one that demands unrelenting vigilance, spirited teamwork, and the use of incredibly sophisticated sensors and weapon systems. But the factor upon which the ultimate success of the ASW mission depends is knowledge of the environment in which the threat finds refuge, the ocean. Providing this knowledge in the form of meteorological and oceanographic support products is a major task of the Naval Oceanography Command. From the Fleet Numerical Oceanography Center in Monterey, California, a ceaseless stream of timely prediction products flows to ASW forces around the world. These products, in their many forms, play a crucial role in the Navy's mission of tracking the threat. This is often how it begins. The tactical flag command center briefing aboard the carrier is interrupted. A contact is made. A potential threat exists. Here we have it, right here, Admiral. 120, 120 nautical miles. This vicinity right here. I uh, recommend that you probably have the USS Bruins come up and assist the USS Vogue in prosecuting it. We also have the VP assets and the S3 assets on board the USS America, which can be used to prosecute the contact located in the vicinity right over here. Any detection warrants close surveillance, but the possibility of a submarine moving into waters where a CV task group exercise is underway there's special attention. The pursuit begins. Contact Kevlevik ASW OpCon and get a P3 out here and let's nail this thing down. At the ASW Operations Center in Keflavik, Iceland, a squadron of P3 Orion stands ready to assume its role in tracking the threat. But before one of these long-range sub-hunting aircraft can take to the skies, the ASWAC mission planner must have up-to-the-minute forecasts of environmental conditions in the search area and en route. Patrol area 12. Right, for 72 hours. Fine, I can give you climatology now and I can give you uh, the updated data as soon as I get it in. Thank you. Betty Officer Jones? Yes, sir. Yeah, we've had a report of a submarine to the south. We need acoustic forecasts. The op immediate message is prepared for sharps. At the Naval Oceanography Command facility supporting the ASWAC, personnel begin immediately to assemble the necessary products. 
The Naval Eastern Oceanography Center provides this facility with meteorological information to develop its aviation briefing, including facsimile weather charts, satellite imagery, and area forecasts. At this point, the geophysics officer is most concerned with conditions which could hamper the VP flight or result in a decision not to launch. Most forecast data is obtained from NEDS, the Naval Environmental Display Station. Drawing on the fleet numerical database, NEDS displays a wide spectrum of meteorological information. In seconds, the operator can call up synoptic data for any area of the globe and for any part of the atmosphere from sea surface to upper air. Graphic overlays can provide a depiction of environmental conditions out to 72 hours. Such information as weather systems and associated fronts, wind speed and direction at various altitudes and air pressure is essential to VP mission planning. Significant wave heights are also of interest because in rough seas, the effectiveness of the sauna buoys will be diminished. Any graphic displayed can be transferred to hard copy for briefing purposes. While the weather is obviously a critical factor in any VP mission, other environmental data must also be considered. In polar latitudes, the marginal sea ice zone is an area of high ambient noise. Knowledge of where the ice edge lies is vital to ASW operations. The uh, eastern coast of Greenland is pretty well socked in all the way down to the southern tip. The facility obtains this knowledge from weekly sea ice analyses and forecasts for polar regions. These are provided by the Naval Polar Oceanography Center in Suitland, Maryland. The information based on satellite imagery, aerial ice reconnaissance, and ship and shore observations provides a composite hemispheric view of the sea ice boundary and forecasts of ice formation or recession for a seven-day period. Even in wide ocean areas free of ice, a certain amount of ambient noise is always present. This noise, produced by wind, waves, shipping, and biological sources, acts as a threshold against which passive sonar systems must detect a target. Another fleet numerical product, ASOPT, the Acoustic Sensor Optimization Message, utilizes predicted ambient noise to aid mission planners in determining the best search frequency and receiver depth. Once the decision is made to launch a VP flight, other environmental support products come into play. If we want to maintain detection and uh, continue it, we're going to have to drop buoys on both sides of that oceanic boundary. Okay, and how will the front affect the sound channels in the area? The deep sound channel in the, uh, the warmer water will be depressed. Because underwater sound is the primary means of detecting and localizing submarines, predictions of passive and active sonar ranges are critical to any ASW mission. The SSQ-47 has uh, active ranges of less than three miles. SSQ-62 would be just a hair better than three miles. Environmental support for active sonar operations is provided by active ASRAP, the active acoustic sensor range prediction. Do we have any ambient noise? Very high due to the weather system that's just... Passive sonar operations are supported by compacted ASRAP and by FITAR, or pre-designated high interest tactical area. Ambient noise is going to be a problem throughout. This analysis indicates just south of the operating area there will be a one degree front. This front has been redrawn on a sonic layer depth analysis showing its relationship to the analysis and the surface weather front. Sir, what's the weather like around that front? The weather around the front is fairly poor but viable. Prior to launch, the facility gives the flight crew a detailed weather brief. 995 millibars, it's deepening. It's moving to the east-northeast at approximately 35 knots. Are there any questions? Well, if not, that concludes the brief. Good luck. Good hunting. Here's your flight forecast folder and acoustic data. With its crew prepared for the mission ahead, the computer-laden P-3 taxis for takeoff. Bound for a search area hundreds of miles away. To conserve fuel and maximize on-station time, 
The pilot follows the computer-generated flight plan, OPARS, the Optimum Path Aircraft Routing System. The output, produced by fleet numerical computers, gives the pilot figures for winds, temperatures, altitudes, and fuel consumption. Once on station, the crew's success in detecting and localizing the target depends largely upon proper placement of sonobuoys. The sonobuoy patterns and depth settings are derived from the acoustic range predictions generated by Naval Oceanography Command personnel. These predictions are now refined using data from an on-site bathythermograph. Range predictions for active sonobuoys are provided by active ASRAP. This product gives acoustic ranges against shallow and deep targets for selected sonobuoy channels and sonar pulse lengths. All ranges are based on a single ping, 50% probability of detection. Active ASRAP also includes the Alpha Index, a three-day forecast of disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field and their effect on MAD the aircraft's magnetic anomaly detection system. Tackle sensor three. I had just had a mad contact on that sunken wreck. Mad check's good. Let's hope we're as good at finding real submarines. The flight continues as the TACO directs the pilot toward the Sonoboy drop points. Flight take up the heading of 270 true. Initial heading to the barrier. Roger, left 270, initial path. Sensor 1, the initial channel will be channel 8, followed by channel 9. As the Sonoboy field is laid, the sensor operators monitor their displays for signs of the threat. Sensor 1 and 2, keep you updated of any contact on any of the dive bar, 8, 9, 1, or 2. Final buoy is out at this time. Flight, here is your flight two point. Tackle sensor 3. I have no radar and ESM contacts on the scope at this time. Gilbert, I might have a possible have a BFI on uh, buoy number four. Yeah, TACO sensor one. I believe I've got contact on dive bar nine at this time. Then finally, success. Possible contact on dive bar nine. Dive bar nine, call your mark on top. We have P3 Charlie on station prosecuting contact Bravo. It's laid a large sonar buoy pattern in this vicinity here. In any ASW operation, detecting the threat is one thing, but localizing and maintaining contact is another. The ocean is a dynamic environment, and submarines will exploit that environment to the fullest extent possible. The assets available to you are the S3 aircraft on board the USS America, and there is also one Lampsburg that's embarked on board the USS Spruance. Admiral is indicated by the chart. Continued success in tracking the threat requires a full range of environmental support for the ASW platforms deployed at sea. We have a moderate strength ocean front located here. The most likely course of action for the contact would be to move north into the area of the ocean front. Launch the ready S3s. Have them relieve the P3 on contact Bravo. Move the P3 250 miles northeast and lay a pattern less than for possible submarine approach uh, from the northeast. Hi, Admiral. Because ocean fronts and eddies have a marked effect on sound propagation, knowledge of their location can be crucial in tactical decision making. This data is provided to carriers either by satellite or by facsimile transmission. Other ships can receive a message version of the data which is then hand plotted. When a front is indicated, it generally represents a refractive boundary upon sound propagation, which can lead to erroneous bearing information. Fronts and eddies data aid the task force commander in determining the best place to position the carrier. Admiral, our course of action to avoid detection would be the same as for the submarine. We should move north into the area of the ocean front to avoid detection. Very well. Have Alpha Sierra change the task force heading to 340. So the carrier heads for refuge in safer waters. The speed and course are based on a fleet numerical product called Acoustic Command and Control Grid. Using the ACC grid, 
the task force commander can select a course through waters that reduces their vulnerability to sonar detection. Meanwhile, an S-3 Viking is ready for launch. Its mission, to extend the range of the Sonoboy search beyond that of the P-3's original field. Roger, on station at this time, uh, proceeding outbound for initial buoy drops. Prior to launch, the Viking crew has received the same kind of environmental support as its P-3 counterpart including acoustic predictions used to program the aircraft's onboard computers. Operations involving the S-3's forward-looking infrared system are supported by a FLIR prediction. This product gives the operator predicted ranges at which the FLIR system will see four types of surface targets. As the S-3 continues its mission, the destroyers have begun closing on the threat. Their mission also requires environmental support. Sir, can we expect any the ASW officer consults the ASW prediction area charts and his microfish climatology for an historical profile of the region. When rapid communications are impossible, these provide readily available data on which to base acoustic predictions. Before the ship reaches the op area, the ASW officer requests and receives preliminary acoustic forecasts from the Eastern Oceanography Center. This environmental support includes compacted ASRAP and FITAR for ship and LAMPS passive sonar systems, active ASRAP also for LAMPS support, TASRAP for ships equipped with towed array sonars, and SHARPS the ship helicopter acoustic range prediction system or active sonars. Situation, uh, now, Captain, At this point, the acoustic predictions are based on synoptic data in fleet numerical computers and provide the best forecast of acoustic propagation for the area of interest. We are closing at max sonar speed uh, to get within passive detection range. How soon can we expect to gain passive detection? Flight star indicates about 30 minutes from now, Captain. And how soon thereafter could we expect to go active? Uh, Sharps indicates 30 minutes after that, Captain. Very well. Let me know, please, when we get past the contact. Yes, sir. Later, when the ship arrives on station, a bathythermograph is taken to determine a real-time thermal profile of the ocean. In CV task force operations, the BT data can be relayed to the carrier and used as input to ICAPS, the Integrated Command ASW Prediction System, which is supported by the Naval Oceanography Command. A computer processes the BT information, along with stored historical data for this part of the ocean, and calculates detection ranges for task force sonar systems. When ICAPS is not available, the on-site BT data is sent to Fleet Numerical, where specific acoustic predictions are generated for the ship. The Sharps prediction provides a 48-hour range forecast for hull-mounted sonars and for the dipping sonars of the carrier-based SH-3 helos. Range predictions are given for a variety of target receiver depth combinations, sonar equipment modes, and sound paths including bottom bounce and direct path. Our supervisor, believe I hold submarine contact. How's your echo quality? Sharp and strong. Go ahead and put it out. All right. TTC, observe B-scan. All station sonar, sonar has active B-scan contact off the starboard bow. Classification, possible sub-low. As walk, as with go, firing bearing clear. Ask sonar to mark the contact. Sonar, DRT, mark the contact. Recommend coming left to course 070. Sonar Supervisor, target tracker sees a shift in Doppler. Sonar Supai, CIC Sonar, we now see the target with the down Doppler indicating the target is opening. Hotel 2, Charlie 4, my searcher contact correlates your listener, over. This is Hotel 2, Victor, contact strong, maintaining, out. Now that contact has been made, 
the task is to keep the threat under surveillance. That's not always easy. Sonar suit, I have no echoes. Okay, get B-scan back control. Shifting control to B-scan. TDC B-scan, I have control. You still see it? I sure don't. Four combat. Aye. All stations sonar, sonar has lost contact. The hard reality is contacts are sometimes lost, often because the environment has intervened in some unexpected way, affecting the accuracy of acoustic prediction ranges. This is often the case when platforms must operate in very dynamic water masses. Front area. We need to send a helo to the south. Very well. Inform Alpha X-ray. Aye, aye, Admiral. Alpha X-ray, this is Alpha Bravo. I have Charlie for Romeo conduct lamps. Bravo Tango drop south of his location. Over. These lamps helos are valuable extensions of ASW ship's sensor and weapons systems. By dropping AXBTs at selected intervals, the lamps can locate temperature variations that indicate the presence of a frontal boundary. Once the front has been delineated, the BT data can be used to modify the acoustic range predictions for deployment of the lamps sauna buoys. Hotel 2, Charlie 4, Lamps has contact. Buoy number 15 is hot. Over. Recommend coming left, of course, 065. Buoy 15 is reported hot on the bearing 068. And so the pursuit goes on. A cat and mouse game in which each side tests the knowledge, skills, and resources of the other. So that is part of what ASW is all about. But for the US Navy, ASW is much more than a game. It is the development of a vital capability and a deadly serious effort to convince potential aggressors that they can never win. B-scan contact off the starboard bow. As with Coach Sonar, I believe this contact correlates with our last contact. Charlie 4 Romeo reports regaining active contact on submarine contact Bravo. Right. C-3 has second submarine under surveillance. Over. Uh, this is Alpha Bravo Roger. Request you inform Fleet Command Center and send us card copy of it. As long as there is a Soviet submarine fleet lurking in the world's oceans, ASW will remain a primary mission of the United States Navy. And the environmental support products of the Naval Oceanography Command will continue to play a key role in tracking the threat. <laughs>